Good morning, artists. Uh, today I want to talk with you about a technique for decorating your greenware with underglazes. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is exploring your sketchbook for inspiration. The reason, well, one of the reasons that I ask you guys to wreck the sketchbooks on the first day and then just keep adding to it um, is so that you have things that you can look to when it comes time to decorate your pots. So many potters that I know um, kind of, they get really focused on making the vessels and then they kind of forget, um, you know, they don't have something to do for the decoration and they're a little lost. Uh, my goal in having you guys do this is that you will not be lost. You'll always have something to reference. All right, so for today, I'm choosing this um, image that's some watercolors and then some collaged paper on the top. Um, drawing some inspiration from that. Uh, what I'm gonna show you guys today is how to create um, sort of like an underglaze, like transfer, uh, print. It kind of works like a temporary tattoo. So if you wanna think of it as an underglaze tattoo, um, that's a great way to think about it. All right. Um, so if I am going to, we can start really simple, uh, maybe with this little spool. You can start by sketching your design. Um, you can even use a light table to trace. Or you can just go ahead and, and go for it. Make sure you have adequate light so you can see what you're doing. All right, this is not the most amazing spool ever, but we're just gonna go for it. All right, um, so I have my underglazes um, and a little ceramic palette, and then I keep it in this um, to-go container. I have several of these in the studio. Uh, so if you wanna use one, that's great. Um, Cause you're gonna end up pouring out more than you need. So we're gonna go ahead and save that. Um, I keep a little water in here, you can see. Um, that keeps my underglazes from drying out. All right, let me scooch a few things here. All right, so what I need is some newsprint, uh, my underglazes and some paintbrush. Um, you can choose your paintbrush based on uh, how detailed your design is. So I might start with this really um, skinny one. All right, and then I like to use the lid as like a little mixing tray. All right, and I'm just gonna paint right over where I had those lines. So I ended up with a lot in my palette, but I know that I don't need that much, which is why I'm saving this um, underglaze the way I am. And it also saves you time because then you don't have to pour out a bunch more um, the next time you're ready to decorate with your underglazes. All right, and there we go. So I will let this dry a little bit and probably do another layer over the top. You can also think about if I wanna have like a little string coming off of there, a little thread, what that might look like. All right, I also might be inspired by these wavy things. So maybe I wanna sketch that out or maybe I just wanna go for it. Uh, one great thing about doing the underglaze as a like temporary tattoo style transfer is that you can try all this stuff out, um, not on your pot and kind of see how it looks. So if I'm not a huge fan of this, I can just let it go. All right, I do wanna show you though how to transfer these. So you can keep painting over these. Um, 
you always want to work like dark to light. Um, the light colors don't work very well over top of the dark colors. Um, so since this is going to get flipped, we want our whites or our light colors to be on the bottom if you're going to use multiple colors and layers. Uh, for example, um, if I have these swirlies and I want it to be kind of like this stuff, um, I'm going to put a little water on this because my glazes are kind of thick. Um, say I want to do this purple. Then I know my black will still show up on top of this blue. Like so. And this is extra important if I'm gonna do a light color like yellow or white. All right. So this is um, a little drawing of that school that I used. Uh, that I did already that's dry. I'm going to cut this out just like your temporary tattoos. And then we're going to apply it in very much the same way. All right, so we've cut out our tattoo. I'm gonna set these things aside to dry. Um, so here's a cup I'm gonna to add to it. It started getting a little bit drier than I usually like uh, for applying these, but we are gonna, we're gonna go for it anyway. Um, go. So figure out where you want this to be. Um, I'm going to give my cup a little bit of a spritz right here. Um, you can see I hand drew, um, hand painted some designs right there. All right. I want a wet surface for it to go on. So I'm going to lay it down here. All right, and then I'm just gonna smooth this out. So you can see how I'm applying water to the back, like a temporary tattoo. If you wanna be a little bit more precise, we can use a damp sponge. If your cup has gotten this dry where it's getting a little chalky or whatever your vessel is, um, be very gentle because when it's this dry, it's starting to get really fragile. We really like to do this at the leather hard stage. You can kind of see it's still in that at the bottom here uh, because it's stronger, has more moisture in it. All right, so there we go. So we've got a design transferring. Um, if you want more of that underlays to transfer, you can keep um, pressing it. Um, one useful tool um, is also this uh, flexible rubber rib. We can kind of gently burnish it with that. All right, that's looking pretty good, our thread there. All right, and then our drawing is on our pot. So pretty cute. Um, we can do more of these. We can also um, add some designs by hand um, to continue to embellish. All right, y'all, let me know what questions you have um, and we can work on this in class and open lab.